And in much of black theology, that is what is most often preached. The story of just how God delivered Israel and how God delivered later on in history another people out of bondage. So when we were talking about doing this, we were saying, what, what to call it? And Wilbert said, well, my mother used to just say oratory. So that's why, that's what it says in your bulletin. And in that um, same vein, I was thinking about my mother. And about a year and a half ago, I wrote a piece for my mother who was very involved in the civil rights movement. And I wrote this piece because um, as she was working very hard to share her wisdom with a younger generation. And it was not well received. And I saw time and time, time and time again she would try and she would have these meetings and she was determined that she was not going to leave here with the knowledge that she had. My mother was um, very much involved in a founding member of Operation Breadbasket, later became Operation Push, that went around Chicago teaching political education. And she and those like her, as now they are in their later years, and have struggled with pharaohs of the present age, I saw that knowledge being dismissed. So I wrote this piece dedicated to my mother, Bobby Jones, called The Sacrificers. This is a story about two generations. One generation had sacrificed, protested, and strategized for systemic change. And the others, the beneficiaries, who were born into an atmosphere of access and privilege, only new strategy through the beeps and tweets of digital systems. The world of instant gratification made sacrifice seem a weak and empty notion. And so although there was so much that still needed to be changed and challenged, those next in line to move the tribe forward knew of a movement, but didn't know how to move past mobilization knew of an elixir of hope, but didn't thirst for renewal, knew the isolation of integration, but not the inherent protection that can come from being left alone. And when the spirit of destruction came again, as it always does, for it takes all defeats as momentary setbacks that reveal costly secrets of conquest. That spirit of destruction was able to blow in new directions. For this time, there were few strong anchors to hold them back. The winds of destruction blew and blew through their homes, through their bodies, unsettling their bones and left a residue of self-loathing on their skin. The atmosphere reeked of agony and distrust. Lies stood tall over truth, and decorum lay fading, mocked and bleeding. The lessons of the sacrificers not shared. The crime they began up the mountain of respect and self-sufficiency. The journey toward self-love and positive community now on pause. As the guides passed away and the vision became blurred, so many dreams began deferred. The sacrificers who fought for their humanity against the destroyers who once enslaved them and hung them from trees now had lived long enough to see the spirit of destruction walk alongside them daily, bringing death to homes, blocks, and schools, but this time dressed in faces that look like them, 
killing mothers and fathers and babies. <coughs> Modesty was mocked. Porn was the norm. You could take it in for free. Hedonism ruled with a firm hand. Broken relationships, abused, misused bodies scattered over the land. And the sacrificers now pray to the generation they had hoped to liberate. Wondered where they would roll on the road to set us free. Some tried to tell the story, but no one wanted to listen. So much other stuff to learn from the sages of crass commercialism. And yet, they still persevered, praying for and giving wisdom to those who would open themselves to the lessons, the knowledge, and the love gained through sacrifice.